Coming live from St. Louis, Missouri, USA is our guest tonight. Welcome to this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live, the show which ensures that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through the industry insights, information, or simply learning from them. And today we have Nancy Erickson, international book coach and publisher of Stone Group Publishing. Welcome to the show, Nancy. Thanks, AJ. I'm so happy to be here. Welcome. Welcome to India and welcome to all the great people who yeah, want to I learn like... about your business, yeah. about what you do. And it is all very intellectual, very fruitful. So Nancy, first to understand from you, why do they call you the book professor? Well, it sort of evolved. So I am... Um... I'm an international book coach. And so the professor side is I always, always uh, taught writing at a university here in St. Louis. And so I kind of, my love for books and the fact that I was a professor and now I teach people how to write their own business book. Um, it just kind of evolved into the book professor. Right, right. And now you see, you are helping a lot of people in terms of writing a book, even those people who do not know how to write a book, who are not trained authors, but you help them. And in fact, the reason is that it helps you expand your business if yes. you write a book. And that's the main reason. Now, let's let's understand from you, Nancy, is that uh, you have got two businesses related to books, Correct. if I understand. One is, one is the book professor and Stonebrook Publishing. That's what right. do you do? What do you do at both these places, and where does this international coaching also come in? Yeah. Well, um, like you said, most people might want to write a book, but they don't know how. And it's why would you know how? You know, you've never done it before, so why would you know how? So what I did is I developed. And you a, give the you give the know how. Yes, exactly. In fact, I hold their hand, and we go through a step by step process that just starts with their idea. And then we progress all the way through writing, editing, and then we shift over into our publishing house, Stonebrook Publishing, to publish and distribute the book worldwide. And so um, the international part is, is that I work with people all over the world. I mean, we've worked with people from Fiji to South Africa to actually India and um, you know many other Europe you know, other European countries and Canada as well. So it's, um, it's really, um, like, as you said, it, it's a way to expand your business. And that's what we really concentrated on is business leaders and entrepreneurs who want to have greater exposure with what they do and to be seen as a subject matter expert in their area. Okay. Okay. Now, Nancy, now let's get down to the nitty gritties of the thing. Who is this book writing for? As I understand, even those people who are not trained authors, they can write. Yes. But, but uh, who exactly is this? Can anybody and everybody who knows a bit of stuff, who as a business, who has something to talk about, should they get down to writing a book? How does it work? Maybe for business purposes, it may be good for the business, yes. but but uh, exactly how does it work uh, and how does it help the people who yeah. are writing their business? How, is the, how does it help to expand their business? Well, I'm glad you asked that because it's a very, um, it's a kind of a long process. It takes a year to write your book and we're not talking about some slap together, you know, PDF file that, you know, people call those ebooks. They're not really ebooks, but we're talking about a really professionally developed and written and, and edited high impact nonfiction book. So you asked about the process. So the process is we start off with a series of what I call foundational questions. And they're questions like, you know, why are you even doing this? What's your, you know, motivation? Uh, two, who is your audience specifically? And how will your audience be changed as a result of them taking in your message? Um, there's 12 of these questions, and we end up just kind of distilling them down into a purpose statement for your book. Now, the purpose statement is 
one sentence. It's It says, the purpose of this book is to do this specific thing for this particular audience, period. Now, um, most business people know who their audience is, right? If you don't, you kind of need to take a step back and figure that part out. But after we have this purpose statement, then I take you through a process that I developed called book mapping. And that's where we map out kind of in a mind map type format, all of the content of your book. And we do that in the way that we can. And you can't put everything you know in a book. That's just not possible, nor would it be very interesting. So what we do is we construct your chapters in problem solution sets. You name the problems that your clients, your audience is likely to have. And then through a very story driven methodology, you're going to present your solutions. So we map everything out before you start writing. It's like every, every message you're going to say, every story you're going to tell, every object lesson, everything that you want to say is going to be on this book map. And there's one for each chapter. So that when we're ready to write, you sit down and it's a matter of execution. You just write, a, you know, the, you know, sentences and paragraphs around what we put there. Now, fast forward to the end about how does it build your, your business. First of all, when you write a book, it should establish you as an expert in your field. It should increase your credibility and it should help you attract a following. But that is only going to be true if your book is well written. You could spend a lot of money and put some ideas together and self-publish your book. And people give me their books all the time. Yeah, I mean, they think, you know, that they want to, they've done something, they've accomplished something and they want to share it. But nine times out of 10, I can open that book. And before I even start reading, I, I can think, oh my gosh, please don't give this to anybody else. Because when you attempted to do something that would increase your credibility, you've actually lowered it. You've kind of trashed it by not, presenting a professional product that where you shine, you know, you know and so, um, so the, it starts with the book, but when you're finished with your book, now, remember I said, we construct your chapters in those problem solution sets, and this is how you can expand your business. When you're finished, you should be able to take every one of those chapters out and repurpose that material for other revenue producing products, such as keynote speeches or seminars or workshops, online courses, other online training. And then of course there are non-revenue producing ways that you can use it too, through like blogs. Uh, many of our clients have developed podcasts from their book. So, Here's the thing with a business. What, one of the hardest things is, is the discoverability, having people know you and have a esteemed opinion of you. And you know that everybody's not going to read a book, right? So we want to meet those, that audience where they're already engaged so that you have a greater opportunity to reach far and deep. And so if you want, you know, if you want to, you know, a bigger message, you really need a bigger platform. And the book and the way we construct it is the beginning of that. Right, Nancy. Now to understand it, uh, as I asked earlier, who is this book? But is it for more coaches, consultants who who need more of this exposure, who have solutions to people's problem because see a lot of people think why should i write a book i have nothing to right. say but one thing i liked is that you have written uh, in in one of uh, one of your places is that you know people don't buy books they buy solutions and right. someone is looking for the message message that's trapped inside you now that is really really wonderful really valuable and it uh, is it stuck me that yes this is something important so how do you could you exp expand yeah. this a bit more yeah, so that people know that they are expert on something and that is they are solution providers actually to people's problems um it's interesting that you bring that up aj because a lot of people think oh i just have had this life it's not very interesting and etc but you actually 
know things that other people don't know. You wouldn't be in business if you weren't. And you, you can help people in ways that other people cannot. And so I, I was talking with one potential client one time. He goes, yeah, I don't know. I've only developed this business and I, you know, did all this incredible, you know, uh, volunteer work, blah, blah, blah. It's not very interesting. And it actually was very interesting to me. And I was like, well, you have this story. And he goes, who am I to write a book? And I just kind of turned around to him and said, who are you to keep that to yourself? I mean, we are really here in our business and in our life to serve others, to offer them something that they can't achieve on their own. And don't keep that trapped inside of you. You know more than you think you know. And when I, when we work with people, you ask me, like, we do work a lot with coaches and consultants and speakers and entrepreneurs and business owners. But there's another class of writers that we work that, and I call those overcomers, people who have been through something and experienced through something and have come out on the other side triumphant. And they, those, uh, that type of writer usually found that when they were in the situation that was so difficult that they didn't have anywhere to turn, there were no resources for them. So they want to, um, share their, their experience and strength and hope with others. Wonderful. Wonderful. And you know, uh, another part that was striking to me was that about the self, no, it is not self publishing, but no. somebody who is actually getting down to publishing your book. But yeah. then the question arises is that people will think, is it too costly? Is it, because it, it is like, uh, on the other hand, when publishers approach you, they pay you. Here, they might have to bear some costs. So how does it yeah. work on this? How does that work? Yeah. Well, the, it's an investment. It's a business investment. And many of our clients put that in their marketing budget. And the way that we ask them to justify it or to consider justifying it financially, because we have to do that, right, is to think, you know, how many clients would I need to get in order to pay for this? expense that I, you know, this investment that I put into it. So um, there are different, would you like me to talk about the costs, AJ? Yes, yes. A big okay. so that, you know, people know that, okay, this is something I can do yeah. for myself. So, of course. So um, to write the book through the book professor and to take advantage of the step-by-step -step process, there's a couple, there's three ways I work with people. Um, one is one-to-one -one coaching. The most popular way is through a uh, group masterminds. And so uh, the participants log in to our website, the private client part, and every week they watch a video presentation that I give them and they download homework and they work on that homework. And then once a week, our entire cohort, which is usually five to seven people, it's small. So you have individual attention. Um, we are on a one hour mastermind call on Zoom. And we talk about what your homework was and what you're doing. So that continues. It's a it's that cost is always U.S. dollars, three hundred and seventy five dollars a month for 12 months. Now, in between writing your book and us publishing your book, there's something called editing. And particularly if our clients aren't professional writers, which none of them are. You're, every great writer has a great editor. And so the cost for editing your book is $15 a page. Now we move into the publishing side. And this is a bit more costly because we have an entire team spread across the United States of designers and proofreaders and interior layout people and all sorts of stuff. So we, um, the cost for the publishing is $7,800 US dollars. And so that's where it, when you're putting on your, uh, you know, business hat, you think, okay, this seems like something good for me. What, what, how many clients do I have to get in order to justify this? Or if you're a speaker, how many speaking engagements w w do I need to get in order to pay for this? And, and this, the speaking thing is interesting as, as is the coaching thing, because when you have a professionally published book, to send in when you're asking, you know, to be considered for a speaking engagement, you are already way ahead of everybody else. 
And if you are a coach, you know, I'm not sure what it's like in India, but in the U.S., people are hanging that shingle out all over and saying, I'm a coach, I'm a coach. And I was like, well, what are your credentials? You know, how do I know that you're, you know, maybe you just lost your job. And so you decided to tell other people yeah. about how yeah. to be a successful employee and you couldn't even keep your job, you know? So, you know, you need high quality credentials in order to attract new clients. And that is what I want to tell you about one of my clients in South Africa. Um, he started his, he didn't start his business, but he was born under the apartheid regime. And so we wrote his book and because the monetary system is very, very different in South Africa, it took him three years to gather the funds to publish the book because U.S. dollars are more valuable in those right. countries as it is in India. And I understand that. Um, but now he's using his book. He is speaking all over the world. He represents his country as one of the top notch entrepreneurs in South Africa. And he he has used this. It has taken him all over the world. And it's fascinating. And his, um, you know, he uh, his his business is in is engineering with HVAC stuff and he, but he was doing it as a way to build up other entrepreneurs in his country and give them a kind of a plan to follow as he had. Right. Right. And how many pages do you normally suggest to these writers or internally you decide to go for, for a book like this? Yeah, that's, People ask me that a lot. How long should my book be? And my answer is always the same. Not one word longer than it needs to be. And there are no standards because listen, we have short attention pans. And what we are helping you to do is to write really tight, concise, moving you know, nonfiction. And so if someone thinks that, oh, it has to be 250 pages, they're putting a lot of fluff in there. Well, we take all that out, you know. Because say what you need to say, be direct and get out and you will have a greater impact that way than you would if you, you know, tried to pad it with some, you know, unnecessary things. Right. So is it, is your business mostly of the writers? Is it mostly, you just took the example of South Africa, but is it mostly uh, confined to the U.S. or you do have options for writers as, uh, across the world to connect with you and there are different packages as you know there is a yeah. the huge difference in terms of you know the way uh, pricing is in terms of local currencies so for the us seven thousand eight thousand ten thousand dollars may still be okay because the recovery is there money money you right. get back but and that, we, we, in we, India, it will be a good yeah. amount of money and the value is there too and so, um, of course, we're paying our people in U.S. dollars. So that's why that's why we charge in U.S. dollars. So um, but we do work with people. Of course, the greater concentration is in the U.S. because I'm here. And when I speak around the U.S. a lot, we get you know a lot of attention that way. But we are international and we've helped many international authors to uh, to elevate themselves and to to be seen as the expert that you already are and to develop a product that you are going to be so proud of to share with others. And the other thing is we also try to work it out through working with you in the writing and our editing so that your book is timeless. Now, nonfiction books should have a really long shelf life unless they're about some immediate topic. They should have a really long shelf life. And so we're very careful so that you're uh, to guide you so that your book isn't outdated in a year or two years or something like that. It should be something that you can use as a business tool for many years to come. Right, right, Nancy. Now, looking at the self-publishing business mm. and this part of the writing, uh, the challenge is of marketing discoverability. How do you, when you are a publisher, when you are doing this for writers, how do you solve this problem 
for the writer is it is it only for their speaking engagements or the people they meet uh, maybe some hundreds and 200s or 500 copies how does it work how do they promote it? Does it yes the marketing part do is it are they left is it left to just the writers or you people also do something for that and how do people because uh, there has to be a differentiator that okay this is this is a book which has been paid for and how do they take it more seriously or as seriously as any other books published by other uh, publishers well you yeah, but yeah kind of asked me two questions one was about the marketing and so yeah. we at our companies we specialize in the creation of the product and not the marketing but i have very strong partners in our industry who strictly specialize in book marketing and so we work with them to work with you to find the plan that helps you the most if if books don't write themselves and they don't market themselves so if you aren't committed to getting the word out about your book about you know talking about it and sharing about it on social media and doing what i've done here is we got connected on podmatch which connects hosts with guests you should be on podcasts talking about your material and the minute you stop doing that that's the minute you will no longer be selling books right. so you need to incorporate that kind of into your lifestyle to do that and the other thing with with businesses and coaches we really encourage you to give copies away to potential clients as your credibility piece and um that's you know you know networking is always important in any business and so some people are freaked out by that term i just call it making friends you know just go make some new friends yeah okay. and and but in the course that I told you about, we have a section where we identify your target markets and we have a, an exercise of a, of a huge spreadsheet that we have you work on throughout the time that you're writing your book so that when you're finished, you know exactly who to approach and uh, what to tell them about that so that you can be... Uh, so the, the hardest way to sell a book is from one person to one person. We like the idea of approaching uh, different associations who have a bigger reach than, than you do on your own and to try to get them to either endorse your book or to carry your book or to share it with their, also with their uh, constituents. Right, right, Nancy. Uh, how is this book business, publishing business, is it very lucrative? Because when people... Uh, people listen to these sort of things. They think, okay, I also can get into this this sort of a book publishing business. But I, I'm sure it's not that not an easy thing to do. There is a lot of hard work and a lot of networking required. Yeah. But in case somebody is interested in a business like this in any other part of the world, how can they go about this? Well, the publishing part is complicated because publishing is a very old industry. Like banking, you know, yes. and it has strict conventions that you need to follow. And if you don't know what they are, you have no, you're like a self-publisher, you know, you have no hope. Um, one of the things that we use as publishers, this book. Yeah. Just one, just one second. I will just put it on a bigger window. for okay. people. This have. book okay. is yeah. called the Chicago yes. Manual of Style. Wait, I, I can't figure out how to get it in the Yes, book. yes, yes. Perfect. It's a big fat thing. That's the Bible for um, publishing. That is our source. And you have to know everything in there <laughs> in order to do that. And so um, also in publishing, you have to hire people who have the talents that you don't have, designers. We have a bank of book cover designers and also a bank of interior layout designers. It's a totally different thing. Proofreaders, et cetera. Um, and so it, uh, you know, you can learn it. And, and I did, I, my original career, I worked for IBM and Oracle corporations. I was a technical person, but right. I've also been doing it for 14 years now. And so we're not making 
the, you know, we're not stubbing our toe like we did in the beginning. So you live and learn, but um, it's, is it lucrative? Um, yeah. I mean, I'm making my living doing this, but you're actually better off doing the thing that you're already good at. Why would you want to reinvent the wheel or start something new? Tell people what you already know. And that enough is valuable. Right. Right. Why would you want to reinvent the wheel? But about you, Nancy, in 2006, you know, uh, because of a family crisis, you moved into this. Earlier, you were with IBM and Oracle selling high-end software solutions to Fortune 500 businesses. So why? Did, my question. And then you went and did your MA, master's degree right. in writing. So I went back to school. To yeah. You is yeah, just to understand that why did you uh, almost sort of yeah. reinvented the wheel for yourself? Yeah. So, okay. So I always wanted to be a writer when I was young and I had things published when I was young. And so, but then I went into being a systems engineer for IBM when I graduated university and all, I did that for a number of years. But what happened was my father was diagnosed with a terminal brain tumor and we knew that he only had several months to live. So I quit everything and went to help take care of my parents at that time. And then when I came back, I was like, well, I don't have a job. What do I really want to do now? And I kept being drawn back to writing. But I thought I needed more instruction. So I went back to school as an adult and got a master's degree in writing. And then I started, then they asked me to teach at the university that I graduated from. So I did that for a while and started this publishing house. Um, the interesting thing was that... Um, when we first started our publishing house, we were getting a lot of manuscripts submitted to us that had a seed of something that was really good, but it was so poorly written. We couldn't edit our way out of it. We couldn't do anything with it. So that's yeah. when I really took a step back and wrote that step-by-step -step process through the book professor that I mentioned earlier. Right, right. Now, see, yours is quite an inspiring story. Everybody who goes through this line, it's not an easy thing to do. And people who want to get into this business, they need to learn a lot and to understand so many things together. And then only people will come to you. But to understand from you, Nancy, how do you manage all these facets of publishing? You know, and at the same time, you are a international book coach. Now here also you... Uh, uh, you named trip top 10 book coach in the US by the coach federation. Again, that's an achievement. How do you manage to, you know, do so many things together and, you know, keep running and doing many things and achieving for yourself as well as for your business? This is quite a thing, especially, you know, a lot of women folk would like to understand how to, in terms of time management and all this work management. I delegate. I have a great staff, in fact. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit of story, too. I only work three days a week. And I have a staff who manages everything else because we've grown to that. And so, like, in my life, I don't, I, I didn't want to work all the time, like 60 hours a week. So I strictly do the things that need my stamp of approval on and, and, then I have wonderful people who uh, come alongside and fulfill their function. Like, you know, the book designers, they can't edit books, you know, and the editors can't design. So it so much is about uh, letting everybody play their own to their own strength. And we've got it worked out pretty well right now. Right. Right. My, my last question on this book part, uh, Nancy, is that, uh, there is so much of things that are happening in the publishing industry, even in the self-publishing, especially, you know, because it, it is easy for a lot of people where there is not much too much of money involved. And even as an industry, like you have Amazon, then you have got the draft to digital and they have tied up now smash words, I guess. That's right. the right. Of, yeah. So a lot of consolidation, a lot of work is happening. Uh, how do you plan out this business sense that, yes, what you are doing today uh, will be 
also there tomorrow in terms of business because there is a lot of competition online yep. and offline both ways. So how do you straddle this difficult path? Well, you brought up a good point. Self-publishing is less expensive, but you're also on your own and you don't know what you don't know. Um, I stay in touch because I'm, I'm in, you know, involved in the Independent Book Publishers Association, you know, like that. So we get a lot of advanced information about what's coming down the pike. But frankly, none of that has changed what we do. It just helps me to speak to those topics because what we're doing is still really solid. And we, tar we target the audience that wants a professional product. So somebody who wants a self-published book really isn't our audience. So okay. we help those people to produce a high impact nonfiction book that will just stand shoulder to shoulder with anything else that's out there on the market. Right. And those people who are interested, how do they connect with you? What's the best way to get the best out of what you uh, yeah. So you can go to the, our, my website, thebookprofessor.com. And there's a link at the time at the top that says schedule a call with Nancy. And that will put you into my calendar and we'll have a Zoom call just to talk. If you just want to talk about book ideas, I love doing that. There's no obligation. There's no charge, nothing. But I would it really encourage your audience to take advantage of that and we'll just chat about your book ideas and you can ask me whatever questions you have and I'll, I can help you figure out if we're a good fit together. Right. Right. Nancy. My last question to you, Nancy, is that, you know, you have come a long way. You have worked in great organizations, big organizations. Now you own an organization yourself. You have been, you are an acknowledged international book coach, you know, award-winning coach at that and you know now you can look back you only work three days a week you delegate work do a lot of things but I don't know sorry if I missed it but uh, you said you love writing and you have a master's in writing I haven't seen anything about your book anywhere when is that oh, coming it's right behind me it's right behind me yes it's called stop yeah it's called stop stalling and start writing and that might be a great place to start. Not, it's an inexpensive book. It's not, you can get it on anywhere. But that really outlines the whole process that I take our authors through. So it gives you a, a, a view into what you would be stepping into if we work together. Okay, so they, they can they can get, get that book uh, on Amazon? Where, where exactly? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Amazon's One the right, thing. Amazon's a good place to go. Wonderful. And and any other book that is uh, in the pipeline from your side? Oh, we have lots of books in the pipeline. Um, no, about yours? About no, oh, about mine? No, you know what? I um because I do so much editing and stuff and working with other people, it kind of it really cramps my time in order to uh, produce another book. But um, it, eventually, I'll get back to that. But for now, I'm just helping other people. Right. You are helping other people and you have read so many books. You keep on reading so many manuscripts and in terms of, you know, writing, you have written book and maybe in future you'll write as a writer or you have to be a voracious reader. Yep. Is there something specially that motivates you that you have read and motivates you in your life? That is always that's like asking me what's my favorite book and I can't answer it. Um, you know, I, I like what you said, AJ, the best writers are really good readers. And so I read all kinds of things. In fact, since our publishing house, I read so much nonfiction through our publishing house. When I'm reading for entertainment, I just read fiction and you can learn so much about the use of the English language by reading other people's books. Um, you know, I, I would always recommend reading the books that come through Stonebrook Publishing. They're all nonfiction, but they're very transformational as well. So, um, yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. On this note, it's a wrap on this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. Thank you so much indeed.
for joining us. Thank you, AJ.